to meet a young man that we had met online when we were buying chairs for the church in New Zealand. And he was the salesman. <laughs> we were buying them from China. And he asked me, what are these chairs for? Mm, and I thought for a while, do I say church? Do I get him in trouble? Do I... <laughs> so I said, uh, it's for church. He said, oh, praise the Lord. I said, do you know Jesus? <laughs> yes, I do. And so we started a, a communication. And then he became very hungry. He knew nothing. You know, he goes to an underground church. And, and just such a, a, a genuine hungry man. So we talked about it. And we prayed about it. So one day I asked him, would you like us to come to China and teach you? <laughs> he said, you would do that? Oh, for you? For that kind of hunger, I'll go to the moon. <laughs> so we went there. And for three days, we taught him in our hotel room and then he got baptized in the bathtub <laughs> so I don't care about the numbers it means nothing to me uh, what matters is a heart a heart that is hungry for God that wants to know the Lord that desires to Know his words. That makes all the difference to me. So uh, we're not going to worry about who is or who's not here. We're going to be glad Jesus is here. Amen. And that you are here. So welcome everybody. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, I was going to start in one particular place. But I'm going to forego that. <coughs> because it was for the people that are not here. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll move past that part. <laughs> and we'll go uh, somewhere else. Um, I want to start a series. <laughs> that we're going to continue on on Wednesday nights about the rebuilding of the Tabernacle of David. Uh, a lot of people heard about the Tabernacle of Moses and everybody's heard about the Temple of Solomon. And uh, more and more people are becoming heightened and aware about this thing called the Tabernacle of David. It seemed to be an insignificant part of history, biblical history, whereas actually it's spoken of all throughout the Word of God. And it's a part of the restoration of end times. And uh, we are all, I'm sure, becoming more and more aware that we are in the end time. Uh, we will see Jesus soon. Uh, just read your Bible. Forget the newspaper. Just read your Bible. And, and uh, you, you see everything that's happening in the world in the pages of the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah, you look at the, the explosive situation in the Middle East and Israel. Yeah. Well, the, that, that's God's clock right there. And you can look at God's clock and you can see it is getting closer and closer yeah. to the time when we will see Jesus. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the 
What's going on in the nations politically? Så er det som hendte politisk i måske chowen. Political systems are falling apart. Systemer politisk systemer detta sånt. We uh, are, my wife is from the United States. Kan man vara någon i USA? You can almost say I am too. I've lived there for half more than half my life. Och du kan säga är nästan där för att jag bor här helt när man lever. And the political system in the United States is disintegrating. Och det politiska systemet i USA det smultrar. It used to be a, a beacon of hope for the world. Now it's just a bunch of corruption. And it's falling apart. And they always say that every empire after two, three hundred years falls apart. Look at history. That is an absolute historical fact. Uh, USA is losing its power. The, the almighty God green dollar is there grown the top land on all most of it people don't want it anymore they want the euro they want the chinese yen go figure that one out they want the yen they want the chinese yen go figure that one out they want the chinese yen but many people many countries are now using that as their reserve so the, these things are all spoken of in the word of god there are wars There's more wars on the planet right now than in any time in history. We may not hear about them all, but they're all over Africa. They're in the Middle East. Uh, they're in Asia. And they're just there are wars everywhere. We have a a orphans home in Myanmar. Vi har vi har ett bottenhem i Myanmar. And you don't hear about it much, but there's war going on on the back doorstep of our orphans home. Men man hör ju inte det, men det krutsch och fyra gånger så är det bara inte att ta det. People are being shot. There's guns. There's bombs. Fast vi har skott och bombar. And we had to provide funds. Och vi måste komma med pengar. To send two of our 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 young boys away. Vi har sent att två av av ungdomarna som vi hade bort. Because the military was going from door to door to militere ta for fra hort lår looking for any young men who is 17 years old and older and pulling them in to the army or light up at the section our common at the elder to the hall of the crutch So this is going on. Do we know much about it? No, we. Don't. I don't know about it because of them. So there's wars. There's rumors of wars. Uh, the, you know, India is a superpower. India is a superpower. North Korea. North Korea. China. China. Russia. Russia. Iran. Iran. They're they're all into these kind of. Uh, leagues and if you get uh, uh, two great nations two military powers like uh, uh, China and Russia together you've got a superpower this is in the bible these things are going to happen it's going to come to pass the great dragon of the east is going to awaken and then there are natural disasters I mean the earth is crying out Taiwan just had a 7.5 earthquake this morning with that dog we were going to yash off to Taiwan she had half seven and a half that's a big earthquake but there are earthquakes every day but the yash of the quantum more and more and more so much so that the scientists are concerned what's going on so neck at the wisdom and the hooks are kind of some gong of the earth is groaning it is crying out waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God waiting for redemption waiting for righteousness waiting for justification and so these things are have all happened it's the and are happening the condition of humanity uh, 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 Paul said to Timothy in the last days perilous times will come and men 
will be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Yes. I mean, you just walk anywhere and what do you see? Cell phones. <laughs> yeah, people loving themselves. They, people don't come and take pictures of mountains anymore. They, they take pictures of themselves and put that out everywhere. I love me. I am the attraction. The world should revolve around me. That's a, it's a silly example, but it is an example. Because this is what's happening among humanity. And then, at the end of it all, is the spiritual condition of the church. This is the final church age. Prophetically, it is called the Laodicean Church Age. It is the seventh and the final church age in the 2000 year period of the Apostolic Church. It is the lukewarm church. It is the church where Jesus said, If you don't repent, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That's how sick this church age makes God. Think about it. None of the other church ages did God say, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. But this church age that is so full of themselves, we need nothing. We have everything. We are so rich. We have beautiful buildings. Beautiful programs. And all Awesome stage, great music, wonderful singers. Oh, look at all the beautiful men and women we have. Oh, the, the platform is just full of the exposure of the flesh. Hello, this is going on today. The church world is full of this garbage. We don't, people don't come anymore into the house of God to find God. They come to hear the music. See the lights. It's a free concert. It's a concert. Let's go and hear the pastor. Oh, I love my pastor. Isn't he cute? Did you like those jeans he was wearing? You know, this is not even an exaggeration. This is how it is. So the pastors of today, they wear their tight t-shirts with their chains and their big muscles and ah! it, it makes me feel sick what about God huh? no wonder God says oh man if you don't repent I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. This is the generation we are in. Why is this sanctuary not full tonight? I'll tell you why. The church age we're in. The lukewarm, dry, Dead, uninterested, who cares, I'm rich, I need nothing, I'm okay. Okay. That's why. But you're here, and I'm grateful for you here. So I'm not going to pound you because you're here. I need to pound the ones that are not here. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So... In the midst of all of this, I've got good news. In the middle of all this chaos, in the middle of all this devastation, where everything around you seems to be falling apart, 
The things of this world are falling apart. Yes. Families are falling apart. School systems are falling apart. It's it's unbelievable. Everything is just not you know not everything appears to be, but so many things you look at it's like it's just it's like yeah. butter melting. In a July sun, maybe yeah. not here, but some, some other countries. Nega, du som då hycker efter, det är akkurat som smör som börjar smälta och har somre. Nega, jag kan skämta men det In you, in 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 you, where we're from in the USA. Här som vi är från. Put anything out for one minute in July and it. Just the better for the opportunity to meet you, the so so smälta det bara. Hallelujah. So it's a system. The good news is that in the midst of all of this, God has promised restoration. Before Jesus comes, God has promised that there will be a time and a season of restoration. And the tabernacle of David is about that restoration. But before we look at that, let's just lay some groundwork and look at some scriptures that show us about this restoration in the end. Go with me to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I, I see all of you, you've got notebooks. So you need a notebook? Do you need a notebook? Anybody? You need, everybody's got notebooks. See, you all came ready to study. I love you people. You make sure you're back here next Wednesday. I can teach people that want to study. Okay. Matthew chapter 17, and I'm going to read verse 10 and 11. And his disciples, Jesus' disciples, asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias or Elijah must first come? They're talking about a scripture in Malachi 4 and verse 6. Where the prophet Malachi said that in the last days before the coming of the Lord, Elijah would come. It is the last verse of the Old Testament. Now that's very significant. It is the final verse of where, where God put a full stop. In the Old Testament. The next thing we see happen. John the Baptist comes. So God connects the old to the new. Shabbat Asahaya. By, by fulfilling the last verse of the Old Testament in the first chapter of the New. It's so powerful. I love the way God works. So, and then he goes on and he says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias or Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. Elias What does that mean? Baina. <laughs> yeah. all things. Okay. Oh, that's a better print. I don't know what baina means. Yeah. To make it, what has make, been crooked. Make right, oh, to, to make it straight again. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good enough. 
to to restore everything that used to be straight and it's been twisted. Allt det som 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 plattar är väl bara till till fördreja. This this uh, restoration is about refreshing. Och det är en restoration som nu ser jag just nu är frisk upp efter. It's about rebuilding. A big job after. Something that used to be there. Nåka som vi är från allt annat. But no longer is. Men som nu är just. Now what did Jesus say? Jag säger Jesus. That Elijah would restore. That Elias called the end of Elijah. All things. What? Ah. <laughs> Are you sure? I still was sicker about the end of Elijah. Ah. Does it say all things? Then does that ah? All things. Do you know what that means? What's the word ah? But who you? It means that all things are broken. That means that all things are broken. If something needs to be restored, it's broken. Or nåka ska enterrisas. Det är först efter att bli lost så är det du det brått. Or it's not maintained. Det är att det inte vill lägga hela. When you buy an old, broken down, busted up house, that you pay for a gammal itla färdig hus, and someone says to you, "Well, what are you going to restore?" Or då är onkel som spelar det kvar. Kan det då för att reparera? Well, I'm going to have to restore everything. Jag måste reparera allt. Because this house is busted. Du är det hus i artisjär. The roof leaks. Och ta läkare. The windows are broken. The door doesn't close. The wood is rotten in the floor. The walls have got holes in them. The, the pipes don't work anymore. I have to restore everything. Jesus did not say this uh, Elijah is going to come and restore one or two or li some little items. He said he's going to restore everything. Now it's not Elijah. It's not the person of Elijah. Jesus referred to John the Baptist as Elijah. Jesus umtala John Stoyperans Elias. And John was not Elijah. Och så spårningen Johannes var inte Elias. So what did he have? Så kvällt hade jag han. Go to Luke. Skulle kvällt Lukas. Chapter one. Kapitel åt. And verse seventeen. Och i sängen då är det. Luke one seventeen. Lukas åt säger John. And when the angel, when the angel came to give uh, the message to uh, John's parents, uh, to what was her name, Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To Zacharias and Elizabeth. Zacharias and Elizabeth. When the angel came to give this message to them, about John, um, Johannes. This is what the angel so said. Verse fifteen. For he shall be great. In the sight of the Lord, han ska vara stolt och fyrig. Hallelujah. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Vi då ser kan dricka sig av ischi dricka. Han ska fylla sig av hela jag antar nu lika ur mörderlöven. That's why when he heard the salutation of Mary, he jumped in his mother's womb. Jag var tvungen att hoppa i bilden jag mådde. Right. He was full of the Holy Ghost. That's what people filled with the Holy Ghost do. They shout. They shout. They rope. They praise. They praise. They worship. They clap. Praise God. The Holy Ghost moves. The Holy Ghost is breath. The Holy Ghost is fire. And so here's John, a baby in the womb of his mother. And he hears the salutation of the woman who is carrying the Messiah. And that spirit in him went, Ah! <laughs> I'm sure if there was a little microphone up to her belly, you would hear him scream. Glory to God! So he will drink no strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Verse 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to 
their God. Mångt av att de ska ska han omvända till Herren Gud Herre. And listen, lyssna nu. And he shall go before him. That's go before Jesus in the spirit and the power oh. of Elijah. Han ska gå ont av honom, så Jesus och i anta och kraft Elias. That's what the, we're talking about. Det är som vi talar om. It's not Elijah. Det är inte Elias. Elijah there. isn't coming into this generation. Yeah. Yeah. But the spirit yeah. Yeah. and the power yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. of Elijah yeah. Yeah. is going to fall upon people. Yeah. Yeah. Not one person, yeah. but a multitude yeah. of people. Yeah. Yes. People who are called by God yeah. to prepare yeah. the way yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Just like John was called. First of all, in our own lives. And then in the world around about us. To prepare the way of the Lord. I am believing God. For that spirit. And that power. Of Elijah. The spirit of restoration. The spirit that turns the hearts. Of the children to the fathers Amen. and the hearts of the fathers to the children. Amen. Where is the big problem in society? Amen. Fathers and children. Children and fathers. It is statistically proven that the majority of people in in the jail in the prisons in the United States had a background having a background with no father the father was absent the father was gone the father was drunk the father was a drug addict they had no fathers so he's talking here about a division that's out there in the world but it's also spiritual fathers the church needs fathers it needs fathers that can bring forth children love those children teach those children turn the hearts of those children to the father which is a figure of authority where is the breakdown in the in society authority don't tell me what to do where is the breakdown in the church authority I don't want authority. Don't sit on my head. It's a shape to be out number. This restoration is going to be a restoration of the father relationship. But a father is not a dictator. He loves. He guides. He leads. But yet he governs. He rules. Hallelujah. Somebody shout it out. This, this is part of the restoration that we are going to see in the end times. Now people don't want authority. It's in their, I don't know about people's physical, natural lives, but in the church world, people reject authority with very good reason. We go and Come on. Because the church is full of people who manipulate and control. Who are not guiding the people of God with love and the word. But through their own self desire to be something. Well... I don't want to come under that kind of authority. Either. So I choose not to. 
I don't blame anybody who does. Så å bebreide andre som, som ikke vil det. But, Men, when that spirit comes, kommer, the spirit and the power of Elijah, Elias er anten, it's going to, that's one of the changes. Så er det en av brøytingene som tilfører. There's fører. going to be fathers. Er yeah. There's going to be children. Her blir det bøtten. And those, the hearts of those fathers will be towards those children. Amen. And the hearts of the children will be towards those fathers. In the natural and in the spiritual world. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I making any sense? Hallelujah. Yes. All right. Okay. Go to the book of Acts. You can find Apostles. Acts chapter 3. Apostles are on three. Woo! Good Lord, we've got it. Hallelujah. Yes. This is powerful. Amen. It says here in uh, verse uh, 19. No, you should have already Apostles are on three. This verse is the motto of my church of seven pillars church this is the verse god gave us in the beginning and we hold on to it and it says repent don't we hate that word <laughs> repent Repent means change. Repent means to turn around. Think differently. Do differently. Be different. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. Ah, I love that. Yeah. Get a different mindset. <laughs> think differently. <laughs> Repent and think differently. <laughs> this goes along with where we were teaching last weekend. <laughs> Change. God bringing us into a new time and a new season. There will be change. But for that to happen, there's got to be repentance and conversion. Exactly, to think differently. Yeah. Don't you love it? Yeah. I love these things. These are treasures to me. Because they give me guidance in the day and in the time and in the season that I'm in. Okay. Okay. Repent and change your thinking. When is the last time you asked the Lord what in my thinking do you want to change? Oh, don't ask him that unless you really want to change. Because <laughs> he'll start showing you things. He'll start speaking to you. This needs to change. For the last five years, God's been dealing with myself and my wife. And slowly changing our thinking. Our thinking on a lot of things. Is changing. You say, well, we don't see a lot of changes. I mean, you're just same old you. Well, we haven't implemented those changes. Because they're not complete. But there's change coming. And before it can happen in your life, first and foremost, it's got to be complete. This change must be solidified. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't mind that. Change my thinking. Okay, moving on. We are Woo! Okay, so repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times is it plural? Yeah. It is plural. Yes. 
times. But we're we talking about last weekend. Yeah. Times and seasons. When the times, the times of refreshing, the times of refreshing belong in more than one season. It's part of the prophetic fulfillment of the end times. But it's also part of the prophetic fulfillment of the millennium. The millennium is a time of refreshing. It is a time of rebuilding, a time of restoration. God's going to restore Israel. He's going to restore the earth to its original beauty. He's going to clean it up. It'll be a thousand years of absolute peace. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. Imagine there will be no temptation because there will be no tempter. He'll be locked up. It will be a, a globe. The Bible says that the glory of the Lord will cover the earth. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like water covers the sea. So that's absolute restoration to God's original purpose from the beginning. So that's part of this time. That's that one. But for you and me, this is also a spiritual time. A time when God wants to refresh. To rebuild, yeah. to restore, and he shall, verse 20, he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. In other words, he will come after this restoration. He will come after this time of refreshing. Verse 21, whom the heaven must receive. I love that. It's going to hold them. It's going to keep them in a house. In other words, the heavens, they're holding Jesus. He, he, he is held back. He is held in the heavenlies until this restoration takes place. I wish somebody would say that. Hallelujah. And so the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of <laughs> we don't have all. Okay. Tawi. <laughs> well, just read it all. Tawi ast will enter us. Well, there, there's the word. Yeah, that's the order. There's the word. Here we see the all things again. Who saw Sujah with ast artus? The heaven must hold him, house him. Him and his kalhui saw them until the times of the restitution or the bringing back to the state and condition before the fall. Until Tatuina, I have to end the rush to the air, a cold further after till Sturna or the Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That until the time of the restitution of all things. Well, when, when is that going to happen? How? Through the spirit and the power of Elijah. Through this move of that power. And that anointing. See, I've got bad news. For these. Uh, churches. Til hesi her. So-called, 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 so-
when you do like this. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm I'm not against anybody. Ich mag nicht. I love all my brothers and sisters. I will fellowship with anybody. As long as I don't have to compromise. Who I am. What I believe. What I stand for. If I have to compromise. Then not doing it. So tell you, Chef. Paul the Apostle made it very clear. He said, if anybody's walking contrary to how I've taught you, don't fellowship with him. That's the New Testament. I didn't say that, he did. What does that mean? It means that if you've got to walk away from the convictions that have been taught and given to you, then walk away. Yeah. So, so, there's no, there's no league, no fellowship worth losing him for. Yeah. I've had to, we've had to walk away from different fellowships because I was being pushed. We were being forced to compromise. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. Not doing it for you. Not doing it for anybody. I love what I have. I love who I love. I love the Lord my God. Yes, I will give my life for him. So you're too late. Sorry. So, bye. Bye bye. Yes. So Amen. That's the way I feel about it. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. So this time of restitution. So I don't hear up of all things is going to take place just before Jesus comes. I personally personally believe it is going to be a very quick work. I don't believe it's going to be a global revival of a magnitude that is so vast and massive, it shakes all the foundations of every church and lasts for a year. It will be around the world. But I believe it's going to be short. It's going to prepare the people. And Jesus is going to come. That's what I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Have I made sense so far? Amen. 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 Yes. Bless the Lord. Then go with me to the book of Acts. I'm, I'm not going to give you this whole lesson that I was going to give you tonight. I'm just, I'll give you enough yeah. to him. Amen. To satisfy your hunger. At the next hunger to come. And then we'll continue next week. It's nice to, to know that we're here for two months, so we got time. We got time. Now, no. when the New Testament church began, not, not everything was dancing on, on Roses. So when she asked and danced on roses, actually, it probably was all dancing on roses because there was a lot of thorns. There were ganz klar nicht to dance on roses und fullt a torn. There was a lot of beauty, but there were a lot of thorns. There were nicht wirklich ein mit nicht gar torn. When the apostolic church began, the apostolische Sanktion began. Oh, there were so many challenges. So what a nick for our beauty. We read about the day of Pentecost. Oh, like, I would just I wish I would live back then. With this on on uh, the on the day with hope. Okay, I'll be ever here. But man, it was just after that that all the fighting began, all the struggles. Man, by the after that, so pretty I destroyed. All the disagreements. All Samir. 
One said this, one said that. One followed Paul, one followed Apollos. One said you needed to be circumcised, one said you didn't. One said, oh yes you do. These Gentiles, they, they need to come under the law. How can they be saved without the law? Many Pharisees got saved. They accepted Jesus. But man, they took their law with them. And they were in they were going to new Christians. Saying you've got to be circumcised. If, if you won't be saved unless you're circumcised. So there was chaos in the church. The questions that arose. You, you would think, wait. So said, oh. Hadn't the Holy Ghost just fallen? That leads and guides into all truth. Mm -hmm, it had. Yeah, yeah. But you see, many of them weren't allowing themselves to be guided. They decided they were the guide. You're not the guide. I'm not the guide. He is the guide. How? Yeah. Allow him to be the yeah. guy. Yeah. Sometimes that change means conversion of the mind. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So there was a big contention. So there was So uh, uh, Paul, Paulus, and Barnabas. Barnabas. They decided. El Jordan, they're going to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. To the main church, where, where James was the pastor, and where the chief elders, not the chief elders, but the elders of the church were gathered together. Many of the apostles were in Jerusalem, and they gathered all these people together, and they presented this problem. What do we do with this problem? He had a hair problem. Peter stands up and he says, well, I'm telling you what, I've, I've been sent to the Gentiles. I, I preach to them and the Holy Ghost is coming on them. They're not circumcised. Well, how can that happen? That was his story. And then James, the pastor, in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he stands up and he brings a message that rings and resounds so powerfully today. Because it's about the restoration in the end times. And this is what he said. In Acts chapter 15. The apostles are in the fifth town. Woo! Oh, Glory yeah. to God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Let's go to verse 13. Order. And after they had held their peace, or in other words, everybody decided to shut up. <laughs> James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. S Simeon or Simon Peter so, has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles and take out of them a people for his name. Simon is after because the God of Biryan he omhoxa and take a name so it falls out heading. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. We had a samspera or prophet and as we skin we had. And then in verse 16. We are the sixth time. He quotes, James quotes Amos 9:11. So Sitera Jacob we almost not you are the threat. After this will I return. After Hetta Skar E Koma Achtos. He's not talking about when Jesus returns. This word return means I will repeat again. 
It means to turn back and do a new. After this, after the Gentiles have been reached, after the gospel of Jesus Christ has gone to the world, which it has, the gospel goes over the airwaves to every country on earth. He says, after that, after this has happened, I will build again the tabernacle of David. I like your translation better. It means to restore. Yes. I will restore. Here we are coming into this time of restoration. Glory to God. This time of refreshing. This time of restitution. I remember about eight years ago I was in my study in our home in USA and I was praying and studying and talking to the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. So tell me, and all I heard was and all I heard was David and David and Elijah. David yeah. or Elias. The Elisa, the Elias. And I'm like, what do they have to do with each other? Because I'm not sure. And I didn't hear it just once. Heard it I heard it three times. Heard it three times. David and Elijah. David or Elias. David and David Elijah. Elias. David and Elijah. David or Elias. And I'm like. Lord, what are you saying to me? So, 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 Elijah was years before David. Elias was liked, all the David. They didn't know each other. They had nothing to do with each other. Well, what are you saying to me? Mm. Hallelujah. Hey. Oh, man. I went and told my wife about it. Remember? I don't know what the Lord's telling me. David and Elijah. It doesn't make sense to me. David and Elijah. David and Elijah. A few days later, I went online to purchase a little, a little wee booklet. It's called Chape by Little Book Link. And this booklet had, had to do with end times. And I don't know why I chose that one. Because there was a multitude of books to buy on the topic that I was studying. But I was directed to that book. And it was the most unimpressive color. It was bland. It was just that color of, like the, of the door. And green letters. And like, yeah, this person didn't have a lot of money to do a book. <laughs> but I, I bought that book. And I'm a, I'm a scan reader. If I read, I'm really, really slow. But then when I scan, I can go very, very fast. Don't ask me to explain that to you. <laughs> so I started scanning through on my laptop. And I went, what? what? I came to a chapter that says David and Elijah. David or Elias. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. This is exciting. This yeah. exciting. So I started reading that so chapter. I read David and Elijah. David Elias. And the writer was talking about this very concept <laughs> of restoration <laughs> through the spirit and power of Elijah <laughs> through the tabernacle of David. <laughs> that both of these things would be restored <laughs> simultaneous <laughs> in the end times. <laughs> That's powerful to yes. us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Both of them have to do with all things. Both of them have to do with a rebuilding. 
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So he says, I'm going to rebuild the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build it again, the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Oh, why is he doing this? What's the whole purpose? Verse 17. That the residue. Oh. Live. That's remnant, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a perfect word. That the remnant. See, the Gentiles, called by his name, we already see that they're, they're already they're in. They've been drawn in. They're called. But then he talks about this restoration that is for the purpose of bringing in the remnant. There are the called, which are many. There are the called. We know there are. We have the called. Many. And then there are the chosen. The remnant. The few. Many are called, few are chosen. This tabernacle, or this restoration of God, is about the remnant. It is about bringing in the remnant. Look, that the residue or the remnant of men might seek after the Lord and the Gentiles upon whom my name is this, this end time move of God must be not only the stirring of the Gentiles, but the restoring, the bringing in, the building of the remnant people men God. This is my passion. Hallelujah. This is my fire. This is my zeal. This is my calling. Amen. Amen. The residue. The remnant people of God. Wake them up. Shake them up. Restore them. To be the people, the kingdom. That God has purposed us to be. Yes. In our own lives. And moreover in that which yes. is to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what this tabernacle of David is about. So to tell us And so we're going to be talking about that. So we have a toso on this tether. What this tabernacle means. To the end time remnant people. Till the end that we are loved in a fast. And yeah, the Gentiles that are called by his name, yeah. they will be touched, they will be affected, they will be ministered to, they will be prepared. But first and foremost, it's the residue. It is the remnant people of God that will be rebuilt, restored, reawakened, and come to the completion of their calling. Hallelujah. Amen. What a day. Yes. What a burden. What a responsibility. Yeah. In a time such as this. Yeah. But it's too late. 
rökt för any demon ett nöjd demon or voice from hell ett var rökt ur helvetet yeah. or wicked human mm. ett var ungmänniskor to try to take me away from my yeah. purpose ja rökt att flytta mig bort från mig den enda målen you came a day late du har kommit för sent it's already yes. settled the a long purpose people have tried folk har provat they have threatened us they have hollat one person said I'm a strong singer. Paul Hansen. Paul Hansen. He will never have a ministry. I've heard all the time. You know why? So much boy. He has no money. I'm the only banker. It's true. I have no money. Yeah, I'm the only banker. But I got the ministry. Yeah, I've done this. You don't need money. You need God. Yeah. So God. God owns all. God owns all. Amen. Amen. And when He wants you to do something, He makes a way. Have we not washed it over and over again? Hallelujah. Miracle of God. So that's my lesson tonight. We are going to be looking at this time of. Restitution. Vi får hitta ett interessant kvinna. Restoration. Inter. Och Of first and foremost, the remnant people of God. Fisk de främst är allt där för att Gud. There's there's a lot included in this. Det nästa som är inkluderat i det här. The the tabernacle of David was full of power. The tabernacle of David was full of kraft. For there to be power, there's got to be the Holy Ghost. Oh, this kraft ska vara som måste hela andra vara. We need the Holy Ghost. Och hur var hela andra? We need the power of the Holy Ghost. A kraft highlight on that. And that spirit and that power of a restoration through that mantle of Elijah. Oh, and the international kraft in that jungle kappa cha Elijah. Thank you. Bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you for this night. Thank you for your precious people that have come here to fellowship with us, to hear your word. We ask you, Lord, that your word would find a place in our hearts, a place where it may bring forth fruit for your kingdom, for your namesake. Amen. Open our inner eyes. Lord, change our thinking as we bow our wills before you, as we repent before you. Bring a change in our lives. We turn to you. We trust you. You are going to do what you promised and finish what you started. Be with your people as we go our way tonight. Watch over us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you all.